uh, through uh, Joe Arati at the uh, Wayne Memorial Hospital. We're making sure he gets the best in-home care, community home care. Already stopped by yesterday afternoon and talked to him, and then we'll begin with in-home therapy uh, for about a month, and then hopefully he'll be able to go to the uh, to a clinic after that himself. Uh, but um, you know, falling and breaking your hip like that's just a, a common thing for for a lot of folks these days. Just fall, boom, bam, you know. And um, uh, but uh, he is recovering. He's uh, able to to. to use his walker right now and get around some so he doesn't have to uh, depend just upon the uh, the wheelchair. But, uh, you know, when I think of hip replacement, Bob, I mean, uh, yeah, when, I, when I think of hip replacement, I think like a hip, okay? And I think they're, they're putting like an artificial hip in there. And it's really not. It's just two long titanium rods, the one that goes down the leg a little ways from the hip and one that goes from the hip joint into the pelvic area. And that one's uh, put, uh, held together by a big old titanium screw, and then you got another screw further down uh, the titanium rod. And that's all I can see in the x ray. There's probably more to it uh, than that. But, um, you know, his hip basically on his left side is the bionic man. It's titanium <laughs> hip on the left hand side. But um, uh, we appreciate all the thoughts and prayers out there from everyone uh, for Dad. And he's um, back home on his road to recovery. And uh, let's see here, we got in uh, this weekend uh, the tickets to go to the Okefenokee Swamp Park Christmas Lights and Train Ride, and we'll be giving away three sets of two tickets each between 8.45 to 8.50. So that means you'll get, be, have a chance to go down to the Okefenokee Swamp Park, see that beautiful park with all the Christmas lights and the entertainment, take that train ride through the, uh, through the woods there with all the different characters and lights and the fun. It's always a great time to go down to Okefenokee Swamp Park during their Christmas time period with their Christmas decorations and fun. And we'll give away three sets of two tickets each this morning between 8.45 and 8.45 to 8.50, somewhere along in there, Bob. Always a popular event. Always a popular event. We got those tickets in uh, over the weekend. And um, we'll give those away in just a little bit right here on 105.5 FM. And um, if you uh, are participating, and I don't know why you wouldn't, in our cash can giveaway, which we're uh, the Georgia Dermatology and Big Dog Country Cash Can Hunt, really. You go out there and try to find that uh, can on public property somewhere in Wayne County. Leave your shovels and ladders at home. You won't need those. But it's hidden somewhere on public property in Wayne County. Uh, we had last week's clues, and they are posted on our website at BigDogCountry.com. And we already started with a new clue this morning at 710, and we'll have it again today at around 1250, then at 303, then at 550, and then start with a brand new clue tomorrow morning. Your chance to find that cash can and win $1,055. 1055, our frequency, win $1,055. All right, we talked about the Jaguars. Anything else uh, from the NFL over the weekend that kind of uh, perked your interest there? This says, says, this says the, theory, the, the theme of the NFL this year is marquee players going out with season ending injuries, and Philadelphia's having a great year. It looks like they lost their quarterback, Carson Wentz, for the, re the rest of the year. Torn ACL is the prognosis, so Nick Foles will have to step in and this tough solution starting quarterback. And right at this time of the year, uh, that's again. Giants lost Odell Beckham, while Houston lost him. I mean, just one marquee player after another just continually gets injured and lost for the year. So that was the big blow to Philadelphia yesterday. Not sure how they're going to do the rest of the year with the Nick Foles, the quarterback. But Carson Wentz was the MVP candidate and got hurt yesterday, had to leave the game. Philadelphia did hang on to win the game, but at least they're starting quarterback for the rest of the year. So just interesting in a playoff Chase continues, a lot of teams still with a chance with those wild card spots, but this Sunday would be the marquee game, Pittsburgh at 11-2 against New England, most likely 11-2 after they win the night against Miami, so that will decide home field advantage in the AFC playoff picture next Sunday in Pittsburgh, so looking forward to that game. Steelers came back from a huge deficit last night and win the game, Ben Roethlisberger throws for over 500 yards, Antonio Brown another big game, so... He should be MVP, in my opinion. Antonio Brown. Okay. Business is booming. Business is booming, huh? Great player. Hard stop. 
All right. Remember, if you ever have any questions or comments here at Big Dog Country Radio, you can always text. Text them in at our main studio in business line, 912-427-3711, 427-3711. We've got three here for you, Bob, at least. Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see what it is here, sis. Because I want to make sure I got the right date here. Yeah, 12, 11, 17 at 801. Here's the, here's the text for you here, Bob. So when the Lee County baseball fiasco uses a grandma cell phone video to make them replay the game, how is the peach thing different? Just an observation. Like I said, that'll be the decision of the George High School Association. What, what are they talking about? Peach County Calhoun played a football game on Friday. Uh -huh. At the end of the game, with about a minute and a half left, Peach County's got a fourth and five inside the 20-yard line of Calhoun. They throw a pass to the sideline. This is what drives you crazy about officiating. Everybody watching the game, everybody at the game, everybody knows it's a catch and first and goal to one, except for the official we called incomplete pass. So on the incomplete pass, Calhoun takes over, runs out the clock, ball game over. But they showed the replay on the big screens up there in Atlanta. If you've been to Mercedes Stadium, you see how big those screens are. Huge. And once that coach from Peach County saw the replay, he went berserk. I give him credit. They, I, I give the entire Peach County coaches and players credit for just not totally going haywire. Yeah, I mean, they... They held their composure pretty good, but it was obvious that the call was wrong. Tommy Palmer called a touchdown. He was broadcasting the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was right. obvious there was a catch. The kid catches the ball, turns, and takes two, three steps, dies for the end zone, and when he comes down, the ball hits the ground and comes loose. It's either a touchdown or first and goal with the one. Right, either it's one. not an incomplete pass, but the right. official called an incomplete pass. So Peach County is protesting. What they're referring to is in a baseball game, a father had a cell phone video of a missed call, right. and they overturned that at the high school office. And well, they, they did. Them, they made him go back and play the end of the game. So what you're saying, well, do you're saying if it's what's fair for the goose is fair for the gander, but all articles in HAC, all reports from the George High School Association is that they're not going to overturn the decision that the play's going to stand as called incomplete pass. So that's what they're that's what they're talking about, but. Peach County school officials are saying they have to exhaust every option they can, and they're hoping that adults will make the right call, but I don't know. What do you do? Do you pick it up from a minute and a half to go? When you go yeah, back do you go back to that play and throw it over again to see what happens? I, I, I don't know. What do you do? I don't know what you would do. So. What would you do? It's just sad that pretty much everybody watching the game felt that Peach County most likely would have won that ball game if the, if the play was called correctly. Yeah. Because they had it first and goal one. I mean, it was the big talk at the Christmas party <laughs> Friday night at the club. It was, a, <laughs> it was the big talk Saturday all over town. It's been the talk all weekend. In fact, it's the, it's the talk nationwide. I mean, they're getting calls all the way from the state of California. Oh, wow. I've seen the game saying it's. I mean, how can you blow that call? But the call was blown. There's no. Well, we had it. the same thing against Griffin right, right. a few years ago. Right. Yeah, right. I mean it was right there. I mean everybody called it. Well, it was a touchdown, it was right? A touchdown. A touchdown. The WTOC the showed the video right. of it. It was a touchdown. I mean this happens and continue. What they're trying to do is they're saying since the state championship games are played at that Georgia and Mercedes and they've got the Mercedes. technology. Right. Why not just use the technology that you have? Right. right. That's, that's, that makes that's, sense. That's another thing they're trying to get implemented by George High School Association. If you have the technology in the state championship games, as important those games are, you should be able to make the correct call. Okay. So, all right. We'll see how it all plays out. So uh, and, that, and, and that answers the, another question a person had there. What is your take on the Georgia High School uh, debacle? But you basically just answered it right there. Well, it's, you know, I, don't, I don't know what they're going to do. I said you, would, you wish they could make the correct call, but I don't know what you would do. How would you... Would you get both teams back at the dome? Would you go stand it? I, I don't know how you're going to... I, I don't know how you do it either. Why did, did the ref say anything? If the guy caught the ball and took two or three steps and reached out, how did he get say... It was disappointing, you know. I, call, I, talk, I joke all the Couldn't time. the other refs come up to him and say, hey, it was, I, said. I talk all the time. It was a catch. I call it a Geneva Convention when they all get together. That, I didn't see that take place at all. There wasn't a gathering of officials to discuss the call at all. They just let the guy who called incomplete pass 
leave it at that. There wasn't any discussion. Watching the game, I was watching the game on Georgia Public TV like most people were, and there wasn't any discussion. It was just a call. And that was just, all the officials, huh? And once they showed the replay up on the screen, everybody went crazy. And Had they started the next play started, before that? They started. Well, if they started the next play, there's nothing you can do about it. What's, what's the person who's probably in trouble is the person who showed the replay on the big screen <laughs> because apparently you're not allowed to do that on controversial calls. It's, you know, oh, come on. That's, the, that's censorship. That's, that's the rule in Major League Ballparks. That's the rule. Is, is it? Yeah, you cannot do that. You know, you can't show a controversial play on the big screen. It's not a First Amendment right. Well, I'm just telling you, that's the rule implemented. we got to get the Broadcaster Association and the Press Association on this. Major League Baseball, that's, that's just... Standard, you just but don't. But you know show. what they're going to claim? They're going to they're going to claim power of intimate domain that this this their facility, their show, they can do what they want to yeah. do. I just I, know, I just know all Wayne County fans, know how Peach County fans, because we still talk yeah. about that call in Griffin. In Griffin, when Griffin. Or he scored a touchdown. Anthony Jordan's in the end zone with the ball and his clear cut touchdown, and they strip it and then they call it a fumble. So we had no recourse in that game. So mm. Peach County's going to have no recourse in this game. So it's just. You know, but it just magnifies what we've discussed year after year after year about how these officials, some, not all, are just not qualified to be officials. Oh, well. That's just... Well, right, let's move on to the next question right. here. It says, ask Bob where you can get tickets to the award banquet. What uh, are they talking yeah. about? The awards banquet tonight, I guess you're talking about. I guess it's yeah. just where can you get tickets to the awards banquet tonight? The award banquet tonight. Which, who's, what award? Uh, it's the End of Game Magazine Awards Banquet in Waycross. Oh, okay. And I, I've got the number, but I don't have it with me. But uh, but if you go to the Waycross City Auditorium, I think you can get a ticket at the event tonight. Oh, come on, why don't you leave the number here with us so if anybody calls, we can give it to them. Okay. Cell phone. Oh, well, you've had it on your cell phone. Can you remember to do that before you leave? Yeah. Okay. We'll just leave it up here where you can get tickets to the awards. So it's the um, in-game magazine awards banquet. They'll have all the high school uh, air, uh, coaches and all, all the area coaches, all the players. It's a very well-attended banquet. Yeah. It's, it's a well-done banquet. Again, they do an excellent job. And it's just, uh, this. I think this is the seventh annual fan. Donovan Darius is going to be the guest speaker. Longtime Jacksonville Jaguar defensive back. So looking forward to seeing Donovan over there in Waycross tonight. So we'll have all the awards for you tomorrow here on local sports. But you can get a ticket at the event. At the event. And it's held where? At the Waycross City Auditorium. What time? 6.30. It starts tonight. Okay. Somebody just commented on uh, the reason why uh, the uh, call may not have been re um, discussed or, or changed or whatever. Somebody just te uh, text in. Remember, you can always text in at 912-427-3711 uh, during the Butch and Bob show or any other time. That's our main studio and business line, but it is text enabled. Somebody text in, the Georgia High School Association caught so much grief from that replayed baseball game that the Georgia High School Association changed the wording in the way in the bylaws said that that stated no judgment calls will be overturned. So that's the reason why is they changed that in the wording in the um, in the white Bible there, stating the fact that uh, no, you cannot look at somebody's cell phone video <laughs> basically and say we we can change that. So no judgment calls will be overturned according to the. Why Bible now from the Georgia High School Association? Well, it's basically what the Atlanta Journal Constitution report, and they're saying that all appeals and complaints will just be listened to, but nothing's going to be able to be done. They're just going to stick to the ruling on the field. But as we've said time and time again, what's sad is that everybody watching the game, everybody, everybody seeing the play, even before the replay, everybody knows it's a catch and first and goal to one, except the person that made the call. That's yeah. what's the frustrating thing if you're a fan or a player or a coach i mean how can you blow that call yeah you know a lot of what call it did he see i don't know a lot of calls you see well i've got to you know you look you're taking a look at well i've got to wait to see the replay to know for sure but everybody knew for sure even tommy palmer knew for sure i mean it's a catch uh, at least it's first and goal to one I, I believe the guy reached out and hit the line as a touchdown I, everybody watching the game thought it was a touchdown all right let's move on because we're getting out of our time here somebody somebody text in so will the games that were not played 
uh, now be played at the at the school's home stadiums. Right. They're at the higher seek is the game. So be played at the home stadium. I know the Warner Robins game's being played at Warner Robins. I know the North Gwinnett Coca game's being played at North Gwinnett. Just haven't seen the dates. I mean, they have an option playing it on Friday or Saturday. So as soon as we get the schedule, which we should have by late this afternoon, we'll have all those games for you on where the dates and times are. Okay. And again, that goes back to another argument. If George High School Association so dead set on it being a neutral site, then why can't these games be at a neutral site? They can play them in a college stadium. They can play them in Macon, there where uh, Mercer plays. They can play them, um, they can, there's a lot of different places they could play them. I don't know, I don't make this decision. Another text that came in, I don't know what this is about because I guess they haven't been around the 301 bypass in a while. Why are all the trees being cleared from the 301 bypass? Around from 301 up to 84. Do you have any idea? I don't know. I didn't know they were. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're being cropped. <laughs> I have, we have no idea right now. All right, Bob, any other words of uh, wisdom this morning before we head out of the world-famous Budget and Bob show? No, I just, I'll leave that number for the tickets. I'll leave the number for the tickets for tonight's banquet. All right, Bob, have a good day. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by Mike Bridge.